So now we're going to welcome up Ilya Polosukin, the co-founder of the NEAR Protocol, to join Juan okay. in conversation peer-to-peer. What a great speech. <laughs> oh, thank I you. I really like this, you know, bring six of something. This is a very powerful exponential multiplier. If, thank you. If, if everyone, as they come, start, start approaching the same way. Yep, that's, that's a goal. Uh, give me some feedback. Give me, uh, on, given that we just saw this, tell me like one thing I did good and one thing I did bad. <laughs> uh, hard questions, huh? Um, I mean, I think like the, the general kind of surfacing that, you know, we're not just trying to build economic systems. We're not just trying to solve technological problems. Like there is a bigger societal shift that's happening that this technology is part of and kind of asking everyone to start thinking about that. I think this is very powerful and kind of, like I, I've heard part of this talk in Amsterdam and definitely got me thinking as well. And now for the bad part, just give me like one thing you didn't like. I mean the, you know, the copy pasta slides of, <laughs> <laughs> probably good. Yep. There's a, a skip uh, part in the slides. <laughs> yep, that's great feedback. I, uh, I was looking at the clock and I was like, oh man, uh, if I go through, speak to each one of these, we're gonna be here all night, but thank you. Um, great, so uh, it's really awesome to be talking together. Um, you and I have both spent a lot of time in, in our last few, in the last five years um, scaling blockchain systems, working in this industry, and seeing the potential. Um, the kind of, I'm curious how you first got started in the crypto space and what, like, what, what did you think was like the glimmer um, that attracted you out of the AI world? Because the AI world is like one of the most exciting and promising um, landscapes in, in, in technology. So like, what was the allure that brought you to the crypto world? Yeah, so I mean, for context, uh, kind of coming from AI, we were actually working on uh, teaching machines to code. That was uh, kind of the project we were doing. And as part of it, we built a crowdsourcing system that was um, working with a lot of kind of student engineers uh, around the world. And they were writing programs for us. They were describing code. They were doing like small tasks. And we had trouble paying them, like paying into China, paying into like Ukraine, Russia, you know, Cuba. We had like a couple of people there. It's just like a, you know, almost impossible in some, some of those cases. And so really crypto was like literally the, you know, the promise of crypto was like, hey, global payments solved. And the answer was like, well, no. Um, it's too expensive, it's too complicated, it's too clunky. Like if you start thinking like, and kind of, but the spirit was there, right? The spirit of this openness of coordination of, um, you know, ability to use economics to incentivize kind of greater, greater problems. And so actually before we started doing protocol, the thing we were trying to do is a crowdsourcing platform where, uh, because we had partners from Google, from Microsoft, they were like, well, can we use them to kind of fund a development of open source data sets with all these people around the world actually contributing to the data? Right? That was kind of the basis of idea. And like, can we use the token economics to align incentives in such a way that they're interested in paying in money right now to get this data later and, and people receiving the rewards? And well, the answer was like, we cannot build that at the moment on Ethereum. And we, that's where we're like, well, why, why not? And so we kind of got into rabbit hole of, of scaling blockchains and started near. Uh, but kind of the spirit of like, how do we coordinate these uh, things and how do we make them at scale and have a lot of different participants with different interests, but aligned around kind of common goal has been always like exciting. And that's why like DAO, DAO, like DAO governance, all those pieces are kind of part of this as well. Yep. Uh, how would you grade blockchains currently, and just be honest, uh, in terms of scalability, like compare them to cloud systems, to machine learning, you know, TPU systems and so on? Yeah, we're still pretty in the beginning, yeah. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think yeah. Filecoin actually like, you know, your numbers look pretty good for like for, uh, even for centralized systems, I think on the, like smart contract computational side, we're still just kind of starting. Like our, our you know, public goal is like, how do we get to a billion users? Yes. Billion active engaged users. And the reality is you need a lot of scale to, to contain that, right? You need, you know, and the only way to scale is like continue expanding the capacity is, you know, improve performance, you know, and also like the reality of blockchain is, is also it's a trade-off between latency and performance, right? You can process billion transactions per second, 
but you will, you know, the finality will be every year, right? And so, uh, like, how do you maintain some experience that actually doesn't suck, right? Is is important. And so, there's a lot of work, but you know, we make in progress as, as a space. We've, I mean, we made tremendous progress in the last four, four years, to be yep. clear. Yeah, yeah, so. totally. <laughs> uh, we, it has been amazing to see the improvement through new chains, through um, sharding systems and roll-ups and so on. Um, what, uh, what? What are you most excited about there? Like, what are the either technologies or techniques, or if you, if you kind of are thinking about these systems and scaling, um, can you paint a picture for us for in terms of what technologies and and strategies do you think work it, will work over the next few years, and kind of like where where we might be, like what orders of magnitude might we be in in like two to four years? Well, I mean. Uh not to sell shell, but I mean, we, like I believe no, what you guys are doing is really <laughs> awesome. It's like yeah. super, super cool um, scaling tech. So, yeah, so I, like, I mean, shard sharding is pretty much a way to do it, right? So, uh, it, it, I mean, to be clear, like it, all of this approach is roll ups, you know, parachains, chains, etc. It's all types of sharding. The question is like, how do you achieve finality, and how do you like build an experience around that that doesn't suck? And so, um, but I think the, the really interesting pieces that will come to play is zero knowledge, right? As, as this matures for scalability, it has a lot of interesting kind of, kind of moments where you can actually then rely on, on a lot more that you wouldn't be able to do before. And so I think like we'll still need sharding, we still need all this technology that we're building and a lot of other folks are building, but with zero knowledge, we can actually like reduce amount of Kind of challenges and like all of the machinery we needed to build to like make sure that if something goes wrong we can recover like we can remove all that and that's you know I love simple systems yep um, and as you sort of think of like the, the zero knowledge approaches right now where you know the, most of the world is going towards different roll-ups and roll-ups upon roll-ups and so on um, and people are starting to add zero knowledge into consensus protocols um, how fast do you think these systems can get, or like, how, what what is the throughput that you think we can we can get to in like a couple of years? Well, so my point, like, I don't think zero knowledge will improve latency. And so that, again, like from my perspective, it's not it's not about like transactions per second. It's about state changes per uh, second of finality. So I'm yep. not, not a sexy metric, but actually the real thing, <laughs> because like r optimistic rollups have you know can have a lot of state changes. Because the state is not committed to the, but then finality is, you know, whatever, seven days or how many days you set. So zero knowledge actually improves on this on this metric, but it's still, you know, right now like 15 minutes can easily for a finality. And so if we're talking about actual like consumer apps, consumer experiences, like you don't want to wait that. And so you will still use sharding, you will still use the same methods to ensure that you can actually deliver experience, but you can kind of final like have you know different sense of finality. And like near, for example, already has different sense of finality. Like first block has we call it doom slug finality, uh, which is like there's a specific you know amount of stay at stake to revert that one block. And then next block you know potentially can finalize it with BFT finality or can be adding more security. Yep. So like uh, you kind of build up the cost. I mean similar like you do it in in proof of work, but here you actually have like you know exact cost of the of the slashed. Thing. And so with zero knowledge, you can actually rely that it's not going to be slashed because it's, it's a valid transition. And so like from my perspective, zero knowledge you know, will be a huge play, but it will be really about kind of adding more finality and, and removing this problem that like, I don't know what happened in that shard, and like, I cannot rely on it for millions of dollars of you know, operations. Yep. And so with zero knowledge, you can. And so th that part, I think, is, is enabling just kind of a freer eco economy at higher scale, but it's not actually solving the fun, like the problem. This is where you need sharding and you need it like you need to implement it in a really fast way to deliver like, you know, one click, you know, I'm playing a video game type of experience. Yep. So uh, the video game use case is a great example. Um, so when you think about a large scale video game or like MMORPG or even something like Twitter, um, uh, do you think that a the web three version of that or like the a Web 2 version moved onto Web 3, um, will that be, can we get to all of that being on-chain, and if so, when? Or do you think it'll be like mix of off-chain, on-chain? Um, I have like a controversial opinion here too, but I'm curious what you think. <laughs> it's a mixed, for, it's always mixed. Like you, you know, you don't need everything to be on-chain. Like that's just not, and I think like figuring out this mix is always the art. But you know, if we're talking about Twitter, for example, 
I, I mean, I'm working on, on some of the stuff to present later, but the reality is you can actually maintain your feed. Your, is, your feed is actually a chain. And so this chain does not need to live on a chain. It can live in Filecoin, right? And so, or, and then on, on chain, on the consensus level, you just need to store the hash of, of the latest hash of your chain. And like you can actually even simplify it, you can batch it. Like there's all kinds of ways to like make it even cheaper. And so this way, now when you post it, you just need to you know post a new thing, update you know with a link to your previous one, and update on chain, and that becomes you know cheap. And and anybody can index this data and build whatever the you know the visualization, the you know the client, whatever that is, that's as performant as possible, right? It can actually index it into a centralized database and provide you a a thing. And so that's kind of the you know, the direction I think everybody is going is like combining all the species together into a holistic, holistic apps that are n like using on chain for identity, for ownership, for payments, for all this like financial own kind of and um, like linking and consensus parts, and then using you know uh, file storage, using communication, the like decentralized communication protocols, using like all of these other pieces like computation, you know, zero like. Proxy re-encryption to do all the other stuff. Yep. And going back to the civilizational scale problems, what are the what are the kinds of things that um, you're excited about that we could be as a community solving together, or that you think are like really important where blockchains and crypto and so on are going to play a huge role, and we should start working on these. Well, I think like I mean, you mentioned it. The AGI is really where we need to start uh, really really paying attention, and so. The reality is right now, the demand on compute in AI, in AI is huge. And so all of the universities, individual researchers, like even startups are actually priced out and are not able to do research. Like literally I've talked to this like assistant professor of the University of Chicago and he's like, yeah, I'm doing theoretical machine learning. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> uh, uh, and he's like, well, like, why, why not do you know one of the things? He's like, well, I, we cannot run any of this stuff. Like, we need, you know, we don't have the compute to do it. And so, the what we need to change, and this is where like leveraging these mechanics is, is to get a kind of common set of compute as well as the crowdsourcing we're talking, as well as what I believe in AI. And the really important piece is action. Is not just you know passive learning; it's actually being able to act and uh, see the reaction of the world. So combining all that into kind of a single you know call it a chain or whatever uh, decentralized platform that is actually incentivized to you know people to bring more compute, people to bring more data, people to bring more AI methods to it, and kind of feed it to to generate you know bigger and bigger community-owned and kind of AGI. Yeah. Do Do you think that? Um Crypto or cryptography and verifiability and so on can play a role in AI alignment or safety. Or how would you do? You think like there's a problem there, or or, or not at all? Actually, like it, it's not a concern. So I think that there's been a lot of like, hey, how do we verify that this compute is correct, right? And this is a really hard problem. Like zero knowledge is part of it, but like at large data at a large scale, it's actually really hard. The benefit of AI is like it's actually very. Um, Kind of very resilient to mass in in the system. So un un unless it's like a f you know a, a constant bias, a if it's like you know one of the nodes just like trying to mess with everything, or you know somebody is like trying to add a bi like small bias, but they have a small portion of the network. Actually, machine learning models can recover from that, and actually sometimes they work better. Like half of the innovation in a M AI came from somebody having a bug in a code, and it's like oh that's actually worked better, and so. I think like there's an interesting thing here because like if we have a, uh, enough replicated and you know kind of resilient uh, kind of distributed system that maintains you know these parameters and up and updates and does the learning, we can actually kind of overcome a lot of the you know problems that some agents may be not uh, honest and still receive receive you know good results. I think that the the more interesting part is. How to make it private? Because let's say, so the, the the stupidest thing that I came up with is, well, if we need something that acts, and we're in blockchain already, why don't we make a machine learning model that eats all of the data, like eats all the internet, you know, all the news, everything, GitHub, and tries to predict the price of all the crypto coins we have. <laughs> and but you know, just predicting price is not interesting. Why don't it act on it? So it actually tries to predict 
the result of its own actions. Because this is the main problem is trading on, stock, on the market is actually your actions are leading to a reaction, which then you know, changes how things work. And so the problem now is that if it's a fully open model, open source, anybody can use it. Like, why would it actually be generating value for the community that's building it versus for somebody running it privately? And so this is where we need like more, you know, privacy methods to computation, to have a distributed kind of, you know, MPC style computation that creates a private result that submits it to a blockchain in a private way that's not front runnable as well to then execute. And so I think that's an interesting also like sub problem, which is important for a lot of other pieces as well. Yep. And what do you think are the bottlenecks there for getting more developers and organizations and teams building these kinds of things? Like there's something missing here where um, certainly the, 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 the ML community and the crypto community haven't quite merged. There's a few crossovers. Uh, like you're one of the, the, the set is like very small and like you're in there. Um, how can we kind of bring these closer together? What's missing? Well, I, I think th there's definitely missing the, the base, right? I think the kind of similar between like until there is a common platform that people can kind of throw things in, they, they don't really know where to start, right? And if you're like in machine learning, there's a lot of stuff to do like here right now. And if you, you're in blockchain, there's a lot, still a lot of stuff to do. Stuff is still, you know, <laughs> not there yet. And so I think like creating this common base, creating this understanding of how the system will work and, and you know, using the future value to align people right now is important. Uh, and then I think you know, amassing a reasonable like amount of compute that actually gets attractive for AI researchers because that's that's a missing piece. Yeah. Do you think there's specific problems that maybe are un underserved in the ML community normally, um, but that the crypto world might care about? Like certainly, um, trading and predictions and so on is a big one. Like maybe you know, um, Alameda and other and other groups will be heavy users. But are there other kinds of problems where um, ML would be extremely useful for crypto? But the ML community is just not, um, not, not paying attention yet. I mean, th there's a bunch of stuff around like recommendations and, and uh, uh, like related to that. But I think the, the interesting thing is still actually using blockchain more as a tool and, and, and solving the problems that the AI community has. Because like, you know, as I said, they, they're, they don't have access, like many of them don't have access. And then, the other side of this is like this problem that like you pretty much need to go to work for Google or OpenAI right now. Like this is like there's no way if, if you're like you like I'm a startup, you're a startup, like there's no way for us to coordinate. And so I think like this is what a blockchain community can actually bring to the table is like, hey, there's enough of you, like universities, startups, etc., and we can actually get Google and OpenAI to participate as well if we create something valuable for them as well. Uh, we may need to actually like figure out some licensing around that and some other stuff, but like I think like this coordination is what blockchain community can bring to the table and and then in turn they'll see kind of you know the, all this AI talent actually you know starting to solve their problems as well but I, like i don't think there's like that many of interesting problems in blockchain itself it's more that there's a lot of problems that AI can be solving, but it's all locked in in this you know, if we think like even GPT-3, like not a lot of people have access to it, right? Uh, so like, you know, having open GPT-3 and GPT-4 and GPT-5, right? It's like, you know, what, like that unlocks a ton of, you know, kind of cool stuff because, and you know, maybe it will, you know, for example, the thing we were doing is teaching machines to code. Like maybe it will start using this model. You can actually do contract verification, right? And it will spotlight things that are, you know, suspicious in your contracts. Maybe it will predict... Like a, a lot of I'm thinking about is security in general. It's like, well, you can do outlier detection. You can, you know, all those things you can start doing, but you kind of need this common core that right now is kind of locked in and sounds as like big players. Um, how about we start a uh, conference uh, for bringing a lot of ML people and a lot of crypto people, and uh, you can help introduce the whole picture into the world. Not to commit you to another event, but um, <laughs> I think it would be really good to get a lot of people uh, together to discuss these things. So I think that there's like a, a right moment where the computing infrastructure that crypto is assembling um, and the problem space um, can be like really like really useful moment. So. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Cool. Let's do it. Um, uh, do you have any asks for our for the Falcon community? What can we do to help 
uh, the near ecosystem, the near applications, and so on? I mean, I think like the, this example, I'm saying like social, for example, right now is probably the you know the biggest thing. Like, I mean, there was a, there was a panel here before discussing all the things. Is like bridging this gap between centralized social and decentralized is probably the most important right now. And like the problem is saying like, hey, we're gonna build this decentralized thing and everybody should come, doesn't work. And so figuring out how can we start by mirroring Twitter, mirroring Reddit directly on these decentralized versions. So at least you can start doing a lot of the stuff we promise we'll do in decentralized world on the current content. For example, you know, doing the uh, understanding like which content is correct or not, who, is, who are bots or not, like all the stuff, you can actually augment it on top of existing content. The problem is while it's locked in in centralized platform, you cannot do that. So why don't we start by moving this content out, freeing it up, right? Like it is actually, you know, at least Twitter is accessible, Reddit is accessible with, you know, limits. And so like how do we incentivize people to use APIs to pull this content, right? Like you'll need a lot of the independent actors to pull it put it on Filecoin, put it on kind of central storage, and then we can start doing all the things we promise we'll do in, in decentralized social. That sounds great. That's a super uh, optimistic view for the future. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, really, it's an honor uh, to have you. And it's really great to, that our communities have a lot of overlap and a lot of collaboration. So yeah, thank you. It's been awesome to be working together and looking forward to many more years to come. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I mean, exciting as well to be here. Thank you. All right. Thanks.